All right, switching colors again, um, but still with the, the same more detailed brush. Actually, I'm going to bounce back and forth between the detail brush and the number four brush to kind of do some blending. But I'm using that same muted purple that we started out with in the beginning, but a less watered down version of it. And I'm starting to add some more uh, dimensional shadows. So some drop shadows underneath the petals. And uh, that's just going to really help. Um, illustrate the form and the shape of the blossom and make it start to look more three-dimensional. I'm gonna pop in here with a kind of a muted gold color. And this is mostly uh, mostly the warmer yellow, the cadmium type yellow, but uh, it's been toned down a bit with a little bit of the muted purple. It I wanted it to kind of read like a, a more of a mellow goldenrod color. And I'm using this uh, in the center of some of the interior petals, again, to try to illustrate the shape and give that sense of dimensionality. And I'm just kind of going to pop back and forth between that more muted yellow and the more muted purple. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit here as I just work my way throughout the flower, trying to illustrate the, the form and the values. And you can see I, I usually keep whatever brush I'm not using in my non-dominant hand, which helps me switch back and forth between the two of them really easily. So I tend to put pigment on the main brush that I'm using, which in this case is the size zero brush. And then if I need to, I will use the size four brush to help kind of soften the edges and blend it out. And you can see this is just a really gradual development. I'm going layer by layer, bit by bit, to try to work up to the right value and right color. In addition to paying attention to the values, the darks and the lights, I'm trying to pay really close attention to the temperature. So um, I want to have the kind of right side of the flower, the shadow side, read a lot cooler. And the left side of the flower, which is the lighter side, read much warmer. So in addition to having a, a dark and a light, having the, the value um, clearly differentiated, having the temperature differentiated with the cool and the shadow and the warm and the light is going to help it to have that really luminous, glowy feel that a flower in the sunshine does. All right, now I'm going in with a bit of a darker color. Um, I've added some of the cadmium type red to the purple color to kind of deepen it and warm it up. I, uh, I want it to read as a shadow, but I don't want to get too dark. So I'm trying to increase the saturation a little bit and uh, help it give, help it have that kind of lit from within look. I'm continuing to add that throughout the flower. Uh, the left side of the flower, the lighter side, I'm using that same color, the the kind of reddish color the, uh, that I used in the dark area, but I've watered it down significantly. So um, it's just not nearly as intense and it, it reads as a much lighter color. All right, now I'm getting a little bit bolder with the shadows. This is that same muted purple from the beginning, but with even less water in it now. And I'm using it to try to illustrate the, the really darkest, the darkest dark areas of the blossom and to try to help it read as more three-dimensional. And I definitely have further to go on the main blossom here, but I'm actually going to switch at this point to um, the backwards facing the, the second blossom um, and try to get some of the dark value down on that. Uh, that's going to really help me see how dark and how light I want to keep the main blossom since uh, values are all relative based on what's around them. So um, I want to get this flower to a closer point of completion before I, I keep moving on the second one just to help myself avoid getting too dark or too light in any area. So um, this purple here is a bit different than the initial purple. I've made it more or less the same way. It's the alizarin with a little bit of viridian green and a tiny bit of yellow, but it's not as much yellow. So it's, it has quite a bit more saturation and I haven't watered it down nearly as much because I want it to be much darker. So um, I'm going in kind of trying to follow that structure of the leaf. So any of the areas that look like um, look like a vein, which you can see in the reference, that kind of lighter veiny area, I'm avoiding those completely and trying to just stick to the areas that actually look purple to me. 
And at this point, I can tell that I, even though I didn't add as much yellow to the purple, it's still a bit too muted and actually needs to have a bit more of a saturated, vibrant feel. So I'm going to go in with some straight quinacridone magenta. I haven't um, cut this with anything else. It is a bit watered down, of course, but... Um, but it's not been desaturated with any yellow, so it is uh, truly uh, bright and vivid, and uh, it's going to really help this uh, read more like the color in the reference image. Just working my way across the petals here, going back and forth between those the more muted darker purple and the quinacridone. At this point, I am going to start adding a little bit of a watered down version of that quinacridone magenta to the tips of the outer petals on the main blossom. And uh, this isn't really represented in the reference image. I, I can see some evidence of it in the color, but I'm definitely amplifying it and going beyond what's in the reference image. And I've decided to do that because um, right now the main blossom is like very soft, very delicate. And this uh, supporting blossom, the, the smaller one off to the right, is going to be much darker and much more vivid. And uh, even though the size difference helps balance them out, since the soft one is much larger and has more detail in it, I don't want them um, to feel imbalanced in terms of the color. So I do want to bring a little bit of that darkness and that saturation into those outer petals. All right, and now back to the smaller blossom with those same two colors, the dark muted purple and the quinacridone. And I'm just going over and over until I feel like I have the, the value and the color mostly right. All right, so quick review of what I went over at this phase. My main goal was to develop the value and the color in both of the blossoms. So I gradually added darker and darker values and more and more saturation and complexity to both of the blossoms, which allowed me to uh, begin creating a sense of form and dimensionality. Added some initial anatomical details to the flowers like veins. And uh, overall, I used a small brush when I was adding the new paint and a larger, softer brush to feather out the edges where necessary. And this is especially true if I was adding a, a really dark or really saturated color to an area that it didn't have it before, an area that was initially really light.